Hello guys, Mike here. I hope you're all doing very well. We are still, uh, the time this video is being recorded, we're still kind of uh, at home. So um, I do hope you are uh, keeping well and uh, using the time as creatively and as sort of uh, productively as you can. That being said, let's jump straight into it. Um, this video is basically surrounding markers. Perhaps not the most exciting topic to be speaking about, but one that's like hugely important. Um, I did actually begin using markers a long, long time ago, probably in my very first film, which was a film called Francis, um, which isn't great, but it's, you know, um, it's on YouTube if you search for it. It's there from about 10 years ago. But anyway, um, markers, you know, if you're looking at it from a film concept, I mean, basically any time we've got these yellow parts here and these big lines which go down the entire screen that is indicating that there is a marker in the session if you don't see this marker then you need to go up to your drop down here and you need to enable markers from this window basically which will give you your marker section so in terms of like if you think of it in a band context if you were going to be giving your session or if you were going to be going into the studio with a session you had done at home and potentially the engineer would be different in the studio that you're giving the session to, you will get some serious brownie points if you, A, organise your session without question, you know, try to like, um, like I attempt to, to lay out, I colour all my, all my um, tracks um, and, you know, I make kind of, um, you know, the blue ones here in this film score, for instance, are like kind of like film elements if you like foley elements and then you've got the kind of red which is the sub buses the greens are kind of like the any effects and verbs and you've got these dark kind of burgundy um colors which is the score stem and the master out so it's a way of me trying to kind of organize the session outside of that if you're to put markers into the track so say you put you know intro verse one you know bridge, chorus, verse two, chorus, etc., etc. outro. It means that when you're in the studio and you're the engineer's kind of jumping to specific sections to say, to listen to, let's say the band are saying, oh, if we can just jump to the chorus, well, the engineer can either just jump to where you've put, hopefully, you know, this one say would say chorus and just hit space bar and he's playing that session. You also can go to um, um, window here and within the window, you should be able to see what they call memory locations which is also um, Apple 5 for you Mac users. Memory locations will bring this up, which is essentially your markers. Why they call it memory locations in this window when they're called markers in the Pro Tools session, I don't know. But, you know, here we can see essentially all the, um, all the markers that are in the session um, and what they're called, um, which is quite useful. And it gives you like a key of what the numbering of that marker is. Um, and you can click through, you know, so say we, we just opened a session and like uh, someone saying to me, like, um, I might, can we just jump back to when the, when the character hits the floor, which I've called hits the deck? Well, yeah, I can do that. I can click 15. It will take me there. If I press space bar, that's when our character hit the floor. So it's a good way of a marking out hit points. Um, yeah, we have switched this conversation now to talking about film scoring, um, you can mark out your what I tend to do when I if a director specifically sat there with me and we've spotted a film I may have made notes I'll then go into well I have made notes or he sent me notes or however that conversation may have I'll normally jump into the session and start to map out my markers for when I want something particularly to happen or when I want a specific feeling so we, if we go back to our memory location, so we do, if we do um, Apple 5, which isn't doing what I wanted it to do. That's very good. I um, know oh it's just hidden behind the other window. Apple 5 does bring that up. So I try to kind of intro, which I've called whistle, and that's because the director in the notes was like, I want a whistling sound. So I just, that was a way of me reminding that I had to have like a whistling sound at the beginning of the score. Titles, titles. Longing, sad cue for when the characters like, you know, longing, addiction, again, fairly sad, conflict and resolve kind of arguments, um, clarity, etc, etc, broken, you can tell it's a cheery film, but um, it's just a way of kind of, I suppose, getting the, those pen and paper notes into the session firstly, but it also then starts to act as a way of you splitting up your cues, so 
you know, say for instance here, I've got intro whistle, which is one M1 in our in our score terms. This is when it starts and this is where it ends. So it means if I click the end point, hit shift and click the start point, Pro Tools has now created a section, which is where that cue, that, that cue starts and ends. And it means I could just literally just bounce out that one cue. Um, you know, same for say, you know, title start here. Oh, sorry, you can't see that one. So titles start here. Titles, this is probably titles end. This is viewing. So should we start here? And then we can, yeah, we end there. So you can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. So it's a way that when you are then comping your score, if you like, to to bounce it out for mix or to export that particular score, uh, particular cue for, you know, for whatever you want to do. Like what I, what I tend to do is write everything in one session and then I'll bounce out um, the WAV of the entire score, um, delete all the MIDI and everything, all the tracks, then import the score, the WAV of the score, but I've still got the markers in the session, if that makes sense. So I've, I've essentially duplicated the composition session, deleted all the tracks, dragged in the WAV of the false full score, but I've still got my mark points. So if I'm then mixing the track sort of like um, separately from the film, which... You don't really do while you're still working to the film, but when you come to kind of like um, uh, when it comes to kind of mixing the score, I don't need the film there anymore because we're we're purely in a in a soundtrack listening environment. We're outside of the film. Um, you can, in terms of creating the markers, um, I used to just hit this plus button. So you'd find a place in the score that you wanted to you wanted to um, to mark, and you just hit the plus. So let's just let's just do one here. So there we go. Plus, this window comes up. And then you can basically give it um, a title and you can say that it's a marker. Um, B and bar will kind of take the marker. It will try to match it to the nearest beat. Whereas if you put it to absolute, it should just mark where you actually are. Um, so for instance, if we do location 10, that's, that is on, that is bang on um, a, um, um, a 16th note by looks of it here. So if I, if I want to create a marker, it's gonna cut. It's gonna cut. Say I want to do it right in the middle there, which is what it's now marked as. We create the marker. If we've got it set to absolute, it will create the marker dead in the middle. Whereas if I had it set to um, bars and beats, it would have chopped it to the nearest bar. Um, technically speaking, when you're first spotting, if you like, or mapping out when you want things to happen, you probably want the absolute turned on because you your session's not going to be mapped out in terms of your time signatures at this point um but you still want to mark out that that something happens there if that makes sense so um um as you get kind of further in and you're actually writing that cue you would have adjusted your time signatures and etc cetera, etc cetera, and your tempos and it, it will hit directly on the on the um uh on on the beat which is how i like to work anyway <coughs> so <coughs> You can um, you can hit that as I say you can hit the plus button, or you can literally on the keyboard just hit the um, what would be the enter on the numerical side of the pad, and it brings up the same window as if you would hit the plus. So I use the numerical um, enter button to, to do my um, to do my markers. Another thing is once you've created your markers, if we went if we go back to this trusty windows memory locations, <coughs> now. Say you keep this open all the time, which when I'm, and that'll be my phone, give me one second. Apologies about that, guys. Um, you know, always mute your phone before you start um, sort of doing any sort of uh, YouTube videos. So as I was saying, um, if you, once I'm kind of into the score and I'm, I've got a fair few cues, I will have this window open. I've got three screens. I normally just put it into one of my other screens. And say we know that we want to jump to the addiction cue. So say, say you've got the session open, you know, your director or your music supervisor's on the phone and they're talking about this cue addiction and you're at the beginning of the session. Well, of course, if you've got the window open, you can just click eight addiction and it's taken us to the start of that. So the, the curse is bang on, even as though I'm zooming into the session, it's bang on when addiction starts or she, or he or she then goes, you know, can we, can we look at the beginning of longing? We're now at the beginning of longing. So you can click, you can also use a keyboard shortcut. So you can do, it's the dot on the numerical pad and say we're going to go to the first cue, which is whistle in our case. If I go dot one dot, it takes me to whistle. Um, if I go, if I want to go to the, um, um, 
Uh, say I want to go to, in our case, conflict and resolve, right? Um, which is 11. If I go dot 11 dot, it takes me to that queue. So it's a, it's a quick way of you jumping between it. So pressing the dot tells Pro Tools that you're going to be touching in like a marker code. So, you know, dot one dot. So dot to say, yes, I want, I'm going to be inputting a marker. Here's the marker dot again to initiate you into it. Um, I just find that really, really, really useful. Um, and I wanted to share that with you guys because, you know, I've seen a couple of composer friends of mine where they almost like, <clears throat> They make their markers in terms of the visuals, but then they don't tend to use them. You know, they've still got like a, a notepad or a um, something open where they're putting time code down, and then they're coming up to the top here and they're kind of entering their time code, or they're they're scrolling along the session and then sort of clicking in, into because you can click on the marker as well, which will which will make it absolute. Not that there's anything wrong. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think um, you know. Being able to actually use the markers correctly, you know, one, eleven, one, dot, right, conflict and resolve, it's taking us straight there. Dot, one, dot, straight back to the to the intro. It's just quick and it's just easy to get to what you want to do. Um, so that's kind of all I really wanted to say, guys, about taking this video into like stupid am amounts of time. Um, but yeah, something very simple that's so powerful. Um, for me anyway, I use this uh, constantly. So um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. And um, I will see you in the next video. Be safe and uh, take care. Bye-bye. All right, guys, just, just as a little outro part, I just wanted to say thank you to all my um, new patrons this month. Um, as promised, your names are going to be coming up the screen as we speak now. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content um, and there's been uh, you know some really cool chats happening behind the scenes there. So um, yeah, um, keep enjoying it and uh, I will see you very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.